Uh, let me say uh, again how very pleased I am to be here. As I said once before, uh, the, this uh, professional organization, the Chartered Institute of Campus, is the best professional association, second, second only to the Nigeria Bar Association. I, I think that it is fair for them to accept that role. There's nothing wrong with being number two. I am number two. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. The provider of the executive and the executive management of the Chartered Institute of Bankers. Thank you very much for this kind invitation to join you at today's commission of the uh, Bankers House, Abuja. I'm happy to see that the CIBM's almost eight year vision to establish a presence here in the Federal Capital Territory eventually comes up in this magnificent edifice that we hold one that is indeed the fit of the institute's status. But perhaps more poignantly, a towering expression of your enduring commitment to excellence and to delivering value to the Nigerian economy over the decades. It is clear from what we see here today what the power of a collective vision that has driven uh, all of what we are seeing today can give rise to we can see that this is the meaning of significant accomplishment. And which is why we put such great premium on the resourcefulness and strength of our private sector. The CPI, the CIBM's role in the private sector cannot be overstated. In laying the parameters for professional and ethical conduct, healthy competition, and continual professional development, it has helped to guide the evolution of a banking industry but has grown to become the MD of the continent. Today, Nigeria is primed and ready for new depths of economic growth and development, with a population the size of ours, constituting the largest market on the continent, a swelling demography of ambitious, tech-savvy young people, accelerating regional integration and connecting to new markets. We are now presented with an unprecedented opportunity to launch our nation into a new decade of sustained prosperity. An opportunity that we are fully committed to as a government, and we expect that we can translate this into deep realities for millions of Nigerians across the country. To understand what the challenges are, and we continue to mix them head on. We also understand that the realization of our country's potential at this crucial moment will require a careful choreography of government policies that remove every impediment in the way of those determined to pursue their dreams and to build their businesses. This is why in the past six years, we have aggressively pursued under the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council heaven, the creation of an environment that allows Nigerian businesses at every level to operate without the bottlenecks, without the drawbacks, that have come to characterize their interface, especially to government agencies and regulators. So building on the progress of these reforms and aggregating the lessons from some of the setbacks in this implementation, we have doubled down now on Quebec on the 7th of February with our 760-day national action plan, which is described as NAP 7.0, on the ease of doing business. It is programmed to run from 7th of April uh, uh, 2022, of all the way up to June, will consolidate on the achievements in the removal of regulatory constraints around agro-exports, driving electronic filing of taxes, and working closely with the states to make their own business environment friendly. As you know, the focus of our, uh, of our PEBEC, the focus of our ease of doing business, has always been on trying to ensure that not just the federal government regulatory agencies, but the states are also able to function optimally so that anyone doing business, and of course business is done in the states, will be able to register their businesses, will be able to access all of the various approvals that are required, especially at the state level, especially land approvals, 
as quickly as possible. Lagos and Kano in particular have been places where we've experimented and also for Tata. But we think that in driving these reforms, we'll be able to do even better in, in, in the coming months and years. Historically, government has never lacked for good plans. So we understand the skepticism that sometimes attends the unveiling of new plans. But we are committed to following through and to the demonstration of good faith every step of the way. There's too much at stake here. This largely informs the zeal that has attended the implementation of our new National Development Plan, 2021 to 2025, a medium-term agenda that seeks to, among other things, generate 21 million full-time jobs and lift 35 million people out of poverty by 2025. The plan commits the government at all levels to an investment of about 49.7 trillion and envisages private sector investment in the order of 298 trillion naira, making a total of 348 trillion naira. So clearly the success of the plan depends greatly on conscious reliance on the private on the private sector. So we are going to be relying heavily, of course, on the private sector. When you look at what the federal government is able to do, if you look at the entire size of the federal government's budget, compare that to the investment that, say, a Dangote is making on the refinery, you will see that the size of federal government or any government uh, involvement in the, in the economy is really quite minute, it's really quite small. So the private sector is the driver of, this, of, of our economy. And we intend to ensure that whatever it takes to support the private sector, we will do. The federal government has stepped out in front with the robust investments in critical infrastructure, roads, rail, power, and broadband connectivity. Last year, in our bid to close the current infrastructure deficit, we, esti we invested an, esti uh, an estimate of, um, we're estimating that the total investment in infrastructure will be about 300 billion. So we invested in Infraco, which I'm sure uh, that you all, you've all heard about. Infraco is supposed to be a 15 trillion infrastructure enterprise, and we're putting 1 trillion as seed capital at the moment. The implementation of that plan is expected to be supported by a range of fiscal and monetary policies, and includes a more intentional promotion of productivity and value addition. Our country is set for great heights. We are a nation, as you know, of great dreamers and great doers. Every time Nigeria has been expected to sink, we have soared and risen beyond our troubles. We've been, we have drawn joy from the depths of despair, and we found courage to keep going, even in the most daunting challenges. The Nigerian spirit remains unfazed and persistently bankable. Despite several years of some of the most severe macroeconomic challenges, including the 2008 financial crisis, the oil crisis that followed, an unexpected pandemic in the past two years, the Nigerian banking industry, owing largely to your outstanding professionalism, has continued to show incredible resilience and growth, contributing about 34.6 trillion to the country's GDP in 2016, in 2017, 37.8 trillion in 2018, 42.7 trillion in 2019, and 53.3 trillion in 2020. In 2021, African startups raised over 4 billion US dollars in funding. This is for about 564 startups. Nigeria, of all the 564, we contributed 35% of all of those 564. That, this is across the continent. Nigeria today has six unicorns. These are tech companies valued at over $1 billion each. One of them, Flutter Wave, is even valued at $3 billion. All of them started after 2015, and they have grown between two recessions. This is the nature of the resilience of the private sector we have, the nature of the acumen, the nature of the determination and commitment of Nigerians, especially young Nigerians. The CIBN has remained, through thick and thin, a professional organization that believes completely in the strength, potential, and future of the Nigerian economy. And you've been faithful partners for decades in this country's economic journey. And we're all immensely proud of the work that you've done and the direct and indirect impact that the work of, this, that the work of the CIBN has had on our economic circumstances and, and our economic development in Nigeria. So today we join everyone 
who is here and who and those who are watching us virtually in celebrating the success of a patriotic and Nigeria-centric organization, the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. So we, so we congratulate uh, Dr. Bayo Lubwebi and his excellent team for their vision and for the determined execution of this great project. And I'll invite you in a moment or two to join me as we cut the ribbon to officially commission uh, the new Bankers House of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening.